So now that we've spent some time digging into the, the basics of ratios and proportions and how they work together, how we convert from one ratio to another, one rate to another, um, we're going to look at uh, some, some more in-depth applications of these uh, tools that we kind of reviewed in the first part of the chapter. The first we're going to look at is a dilation. And a dilation, if, you, uh, if you've been to the eye doctor, eye doctor or uh, a lot of times you might, you might hear about concussion tests so that, that look at the pupils to see if they're dilated, um, you, you know what, you have an idea of what this is. Uh, an example of a dilation is when uh, you're, you know, you're in the dark um, and you open your, you, the light pops on and what happens to your, to your, uh, your pupil there is, is it dilates. That's why your eyes hurt whenever you turn the lights on real fast. Uh, that's the muscle in your eye, in your iris, is adjusting uh, the opening for your, your eye there. Just like in science, you have your pinhole cameras that you worked on. The, um, the opening there, uh, I think it's called the aperture, is uh, your, your pupil. So um, a dilation, then, is this, this action. What's happening It's the verb form of the word dilate. So a dilation. Uh, if we look at the definition, um, is a transformation that changes the size but not the shape. A couple of important things to highlight here. Uh, again, we're not, we're not changing what the shape is. Um, it can either make it smaller or make it make a shape bigger. <clears throat> One of the important things to, to, to realize here is what shapes are composed of. Uh, if you look at like these two triangles here, this is a good example of a dilation. You have the smaller red triangle being dilated into the larger blue triangle. So this is a dilation that enlarges this shape. Um, notice what does not change here, though. Angle B stays the same as angle B. It stays a, a right triangle, it looks like. Angle A stays uh, the same size as angle A prime. That little apostrophe there uh, is read as prime, meaning new A. Uh, old C is the same as new C, or C prime. Um, so we're changing the side lengths, the lengths of the sides, but not the angles itself. That's what's causing the size to change, but not the shape to change. Uh, to show you another example here, let's look at these three beautiful shapes. Um, if I take the leprechaun and I kind of drag it, notice I'm keeping the ratio of the height and the width the same. So in these two examples, I've made my, uh, my leprechaun larger and smaller. I kept the ratios of those other uh, measurements, though. Those stay the same. But if I change that ratio, if I only change the height, but I keep the width the same, notice what happens. I get a, uh, a little fat leprechaun here that's all squeezed out. So this is an example of something that is not a dilation because we have changed the actual shape of the object. So looking at a couple examples here, what you want to look at when you're trying to determine whether it's a dilation or not, you want to actually look at, did the angles change? So if you look at uh, example here, a, example A, this is a dilation because we keep those angles the same. Now, if you look at example B, uh, notice that if you look at the bottom of the diamond here, compare angle S to angle S prime. Actually, you could do the same with any of these angles. Um, they kind of might look like they're the same, but notice that S prime is kind of dragged a little lower, making that angle a little less. So this is not a dilation because I changed, I changed the angles, so I changed uh, the shape. Example C now, you notice we changed the size, but we kept these as four right angles. And notice how much those changed stays in proportion. That's going to be uh, important when we look at similar figures. Looking at example D then, this might look a little close, but if you take a closer look at angle M, um, this is not quite a dilation. The other thing you can look at is look at the ratio of the sides here. So I've kind of highlighted the two sides on the left and the two bottoms. And look at when I move these together. This is not proportional. So in other words, how long I change, and the, the amount that I change the left side is not in proportion with how much I change the bottom. Looks like for the the, uh, the smaller triangle, I didn't quite change the bottom enough. I didn't, I, or I shrinked it too much. So that's kind of a, a spot check there to see whether it's it's. You can tell it's kind of not a dilation. It's, uh, one more definition we need to look at is the scale factor. 
Um, scale factor describes how much a figure is made bigger or smaller. And notice that word factor there. That word factor, once again, is what we multiply by. And notice it's all the dimensions, all the parts of this thing. That's what we multiply by. A um, couple things here. This is a very helpful hint, something to keep in mind. If we have a scale factor between 0 and 1, we're going to make a smaller figure. Think about what type of number that would be. That would be a fraction. So this would be a fraction that is half as big, or a shape would be half as big, or a third as big, or four-fifths as big. If I say something is half as big, obviously it's smaller than the image I started with. If we look at a scale factor bigger than 1, that would be like 2 or 3, whatever, um, that's going to be multiplying it by 2 or multiplying by 3. Obviously, it's going to get bigger. So if the scale factor is what we multiply by, then what we multiply by will determine whether my object gets bigger or smaller. Take a look at this example here. Um, if I have these two rectangles, notice what's happening to the red square, the new square, as I slide my scale factor up and down. So if I have a scale factor of 1, meaning I multiply by 1, notice my, my shape stays the same. Multiply something by 1, it stays as itself. If I make it smaller than 1, if I slide it down to like around 1 half, notice it becomes half as big. It gets smaller. And again, on the other side of the scale, if I move it up uh, to, to 1 and a half or to 2, it gets 1 and a half times bigger or 2 times bigger. So then looking at uh, an example of a, a triangle here, notice it says we're going to dilate this by 1 and a half. Now the scale factor, the scale factor of one and a half, we're going to multiply means we're going to multiply everything by one and a half. So any information we have that's given to us, we're just going to do times 1.5. Here they give me the side lengths. So when I multiply all the side lengths here, there's a lot of work involved here, so you might have to pause the video. But when I multiply all those side lengths, I end up with the following uh, dimensions. The top PQ becomes 2.4, QR becomes 1.5. Uh, on PR, that should say 1.8 times 1.5. I forgot to write one point. But that becomes 2.7. That's how much my side lengths are going to change. Now, what you need to be careful of when you draw the new triangle, you need to be careful that uh, P, Q, and R, all those angles, stay exactly the same. So notice angle P. We try to keep that the same as, as the old angle P. The new angle Q, we try to keep that the same as the old angle Q. And the new angle R, we try to keep that the same as well. So let's look at this on a coordinate plane then. This is actually a lot easier to do than trying to uh, freehand these drawings. Here I have a triangle ABC. And the first thing I've done, uh, first thing I've done is written out the three coordinates of the three, the, the coordinates of each of the vertices. Um, if you notice, in the directions, it says use a scale factor of 2. Now think to yourself, that means I'm getting twice as big, so my new object should be larger than my old object. Good way to check yourself and make sure you're doing it right. All I'm going to do then, remember I said in the previous example, multiply all the information you have by the scale factor. So here, that means I'm going to do 4 times 2 and 8 times 2. So A prime, or my new A, is going to be those products, when I multiply each of those coordinates by the scale factor, it's going to be 8, 16. The new B, I'm going to multiply 3 times 2 and 2 times 2. And it's going to be 6, 4. And then I'll multiply 5 times 2 and 2 times 2. That'll give me 10, 4 for the new C. And if I plot those, I'm going to put those in, 8, 16, uh, 6, so good, 10, 4 and then 6, 4. And if I connect all the dots, notice I get a triangle that is the same shape as the red triangle, but the side lengths are longer and it's twice as big. Little hint for accomplishing these, or for making sure you did these right. Um, we're going to use something called the center of dilation. Now this sounds a little confusing, but uh, basically it's a check for you to make sure you dilated it correctly. The center of dilation is if we took all the new points and match them up with all the old points, kind of connect the, the dots. So if you look in the, the triangle to the, uh, in, in black there, if I took the new A and connected it with the old A, the new B and connected it with the old B, the new C and connected it with the old C, and I kind of drew all those lines back, they would all intersect at the same point, 
but this only happens if I dilated this correctly. We'll take a little bit closer look tomorrow about why this works. But again, it only works if I dilated it correctly. So let's go back to our previous example and let's test this out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to connect the new A, so the top there. I'll connect that with the old A and kind of extend that line on through. So connect the dots here. And then I'll take the new B, bottom left, connect that, extend that through, and the new C and extend that through, and notice they all meet at the origin. If you do this right, on the coordinate plane, these should meet at the origin. That should be your center of dilation. Let's take a look at the next one. We scale factor of one third. If it's one third times, that means it's one third as big, or one third of the original image. So every coordinate here, I'm just going to multiply by one third, and I should end up with a triangle that's smaller. So the new A is one three. The new B, multiply each of those by one third should be 3, 2. And the new C, multiply each of those by one third, should come out to 2, 1. So let's graph that, and we'll check the center of dilation to make sure it comes out correctly. So here's 1, 3, and then we'll plot uh, 3, 2. There's B prime, and C prime is at 2, 1. Connect the dots. Looks like it's about a third of the size. And there you have it. Let's check the center of dilation. Let's connect old C with new C, old B with new B. And it should line right back up there at the origin, and it does, so I know I dilated this correctly, and I put it in the right spot. So tomorrow in class, what we're going to do, I'm going to give you, um, I'm going to give you uh, an image, and you're going to dilate it, uh, and we're going to show kind of why that center of dilation uh, works. So for tonight, you have a couple of uh, another part to the homework here. Go ahead and uh, do that, and turn that in tomorrow, and uh, we'll explore this further uh, tomorrow.